Good evening. My name is Pastor Clifford Sessom. I am the senior pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. We're located in the city of Riverside at 16681 Wood Road. We want to welcome you to our weekly Bible study. We are doing an exhaustive, uh, an exhaustive study, I'll say that again, on the fact that we are heirs of God. Amen. We're utilizing the principle of total immersion. The principle is called total immersion. The principle of total immersion was developed during World War II. As the American soldiers, uh, it was necessary for them to learn German, uh, the German language. And so what, was, what happened was they uh, were placed with uh, German citizens for, uh, I think, two, two months. And only thing they heard was uh, the German language. And they found that they were able to pick that language up very quickly. And that principle was developed, total immersion. And uh, the way we utilize total immersion when it comes to biblical studies is we focus on a certain subject and we that's all we talk about, that particular subject. Amen. And we say it and we say it and we say it and we say it and we say it. We say it so much that it becomes uh, how can I, uh, muscle memory. I'll say that. Because, I mean, you, you, you get it. Amen. You see it. Amen. You speak it. You know it. You believe it. Amen. So if you have your Bible, oh yeah, and tonight what we're going to be talking about is the fact that we're uh, heirs of everything now. Amen. We're heirs of everything now. Amen. So we give God the praise for you. If you would, would you turn in your Bibles to the book of Galatians once again? And once you go there, I'll go ahead. And while you're getting there, I'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. We praise and magnify you. We say this is the day that you made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, oh God. Father, we pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for your anointing upon this Bible study. We thank you, Father God, for those who are viewing via Facebook Live and via YouTube. Father, we thank you right now. We bless right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your grace to teach. We count it a privilege to be able to share the word of the kingdom with these, your people. We believe that they have ears to hear what your spirit is saying unto the church. Now we come against every foe to faith. Any spirit that would try to hinder us, we rebuke you right now. And we cast you down. We claim victory and good success in this endeavor. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father, for the cameras. We thank you for the Wi-Fi. We thank you for the internet. We thank you for the computers. We thank you for the lights. We thank you for everything that you have provided for us, Father God. Oh God, and we endeavor to be good stewards over it, Father God, as we minister the word of the kingdom. And those that agree, say amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. And I apologize for the little tardiness. The, uh, uh, you know, the electronics, when you're depending on that, sometimes, uh, especially when you're dealing with Wi-Fi signals and all that, sometimes it does not connect. Uh, immediately and so you're resetting things you're turning things off and you're resetting things and you turn things off and uh, we can thank God that we were able to to sync up amen and uh, get our our broadcast moving forward once again we want to thank you all that uh, came on tonight amen glory to God uh, we're dealing with the fact tonight last week we dealt with the topic of that we were heirs of everything well, tonight we're going to add one more word to that topic. We're going to let you know 
that we are heirs of everything now. A amen. And that has some significance because a lot of people uh, uh, in the Christian community, we, we were taught that we'll get everything when we get to heaven. Now, I do agree that there is some degree of going through, there's some degree of suffering uh, in, on, while we're on this earth, in this earth. Uh, but the issue is, there's some things that Christ Jesus at his death, burial, and resurrection he left for us to inherit as inheritors now. Amen. And so we want to deal with the fact that according to the word, we are heirs of everything now. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, as I've always said, those that have been following me, uh, uh, I became an heir, amen, of God more than 50 years ago in Buffalo, New York. Uh, more than 50 years ago. Amen. When did it happen? It happened when I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. At that moment, amen, I was born into the richest family, not one of, but the richest family ever known. At that point, when I was born again, I was born into the royal family. Amen. And this royal family owns and operates the entire universe. Amen. Glory to God. And the truth of the matter is, uh, this inheritance is so vast that it will take an eternity to fully fathom or to fully comprehend, amen, the, the length, the breadth, and the height. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, son. And the width of what of this inheritance. Amen. Now, the truth of the matter is, uh, uh, I did not take full advantage of my inheritance. As a matter of fact, there were some years, some decades that there was some squandering going on because I was ignorant as to what the word of God said about me and about my place in Christ, who I, who I am, what I can do, where I'm at, all of that, you know. And so there was some there as a result, I backslid. Amen. In other words, I started living in according totally in accordance to the world. Amen. But I thank God that when the Lord, amen, it gave me out when I when I uh came back to the Lord, amen, glory to God. Uh over uh thirty five years ago, amen, glory to God. I began to learn, amen, glory to God, and understand the word of God and uh, and God sat me down to some sound teaching. Amen. So therefore, and I got a firm footing. And now I know that I am an heir of God. The Bible says in Galatians chapter four, some of y'all going to know this stuff by heart. We've been, we've been totally immersing ourselves in this. It says, now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, he differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. In other words, I had the opportunity to seize control of my inheritance and take advantage, amen, as being a, of those of that as being a child of God. However, uh, like the Word of God says, as long as he is a child, what does a child? What do you, what do you mean? I was immature. I was ignorant concerning the things of the kingdom, amen. But I'm back now, amen. Glory to God, Hallelujah. So now. What is the purpose of our study? We, 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 we're doing a review. We're, we're totally immersing ourselves in this. Some of y'all should be able to say this with me. The purpose of our study is to renew our minds and see ourselves as heirs of God. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. To, to renew your mind. Amen. And see yourself as an heir of God. Hallelujah. Next is to discover what is included in our inheritance. Amen. That's the purpose of this study, this total immersion study uh, about being heirs of God. And then last but not least, we want to learn how to take our inheritance. A amen. Praise the Lord. We want to know, learn how to receive it by faith. Praise the Lord. Now, Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7 reads this way. 
But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, are, 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 are sons, okay? A-R-E, are. God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Look at verse, look at this. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. That word servant is in other translations, that word is slave, all right? Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So in review, we need you to understand and catch this, the, the fact, this revelation, that you are an heir of God through Christ. Amen. So somebody say this. We, I am, say I am an heir of God. Amen. I'm one of his heirs. Come on. Let's go to the book of first Peter. First Peter. Chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 3. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. So we understand we are heirs of God. We, we established that. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath, all right, hath, means already done, begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance. Come on, to an inheritance. Because in my Bible, that after the word dead, there's a comma. In other words, the, the, the thought is not yet complete, okay? So he has not ended the sentence. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not, the, not away, reserved in heaven for you, comma, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Okay, so... We're heirs of God, and we're heirs by birth. The Bible says, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which has according, which according to us abundant mercy, hath begotten us. Hath begotten us. In other words, we've been born into, uh, amen, this family. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're heirs by birth because of our being born again. Come on. And now, go next, we want you to turn to Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not... Receive the spirit of bondage again. No, no, so you hear that? You're no longer slaves. You have not yet received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. All right now heirs of God and joint heirs, joint heirs with Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, see, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. What he has, we have. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, let's go deep into our lesson. We are heirs Amen. Of everything now. Amen. Now, what we also want to answer the question is, when can we access our inheritance? When can we do it? 
Amen. Now, if you want to wait until you die and go on to glory, that's your prerogative. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible teaches differently. It teaches that we ha can access and enjoy our inheritance even now. Amen. We are, amen, glory to God, uh, uh, going to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. We're dealing with the, the fact tonight that we are heirs of everything now. Hallelujah. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet or qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Amen. In light. Who hath, hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath, hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Glory to God. Now. Looking at verse 12 of Colossians chapter 1, there's a word I need you to understand. It says, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet. Not M-E-A-T, but M-E-E-T, meet. The Greek, amen, definition of that, it means to enable, it means to qualify, it means to equip. So in other words, God has equipped us so that we could that we might re be able to receive our inheritance. A amen somebody. He did that. Now, verse 12 from the amplified classic version of the Bible. It reads this way. Giving thanks to the Father who has who has in, in other words, it uses the, in the the King James Bible uses the word hath, but the Amplified used the word has, and I did that just for clarification so you can understand that it's already done. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit, Amen. Glory to God, uh, to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people in the light. Amen. So once again, beloved, we do not have to wait for heaven to claim our inheritance. Our inheritance belongs to us now. How can I say that? It says he has made us meet. Come on, somebody. He has or hath interchangeably, has and hath, same thing, delivered us from the power of darkness. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption. We've been redeemed. We've been made over. Amen. Glory to God. We've been brought out, bought out. Amen. Redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Our full inheritance belongs to us now we are heirs of everything now. Now let's go to uh, the book of Acts. Amen. Acts chapter 20. I'm going to read a portion of scripture to give some clarity. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 20. Mm. I want to start reading uh, from verse 28. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers 
to feed the church of God. That's what I endeavor to do. I endeavor to feed you. You know, when it says an overseer, an overseer is another term, amen, glory to God, for a bishop or an elder, amen, glory to God, in the church, okay? Or, or a pastor, it says, uh, take heed therefore unto yourselves, in other words, be careful, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, not merely emotionalize them, but to give them food, feed them, give them meat, give them the nourishment of the word that they will need to keep them strong. Come on, somebody, to keep them strong so they can be overcomers in life. Overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. When it says grievous, these are savages. Amen. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. He said, Folk, even from your own numbers, folk going to try to make a church split. They, come on, somebody. He, they, they're going to start speaking stuff that they don't even know what the heck they're talking about. Come on. But they're going to do that. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 31, he says, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Paul is telling the church in Ephesus, he said, hey, stuff going to happen. Amen. But you got to do your job, pastors. You got to continue to feed the church. Some people are going to want that. They're, they're not going to like, they may not like your 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 style. They may not like, the, the, you know, the, the, some, see, some people just want you to give them everything. Come on. They don't want to do any work for anything. They don't want to study. They don't want to read the Bible. You know, they, they don't want to. They don't want to give. They don't want to tithe. These are, they don't want to do it. Amen. But they want you, once you have fulfilled what you're supposed to do, your obedience and the, and the blessings start rolling in, they, they're going to be wanting your stuff. Uh, amen. So he tells us to watch. Amen. He tells me to teach. Verse 32, this is where we want to camp out in for just a few minutes. It says, and now, brethren, I commit, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Sanctified. I need to read that at the verse 32. Uh, from the Amplified Bible. It says, now, brethren, it's, excuse me, it says, and now, brethren. So when it's used the word brethren, it lets us know that he's talking to the church. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to those, those members of the ecclesia, the called out ones. Amen. And now, brethren, I commit you to God. Look what he says. I deposit you in his charge, entrusting you to his protection and care. It says, and I commend you to the word of his grace, to the commands and counsels and promises of his unmerited favor. It is able to build you up and to give you your rightful inheritance among all God's set apart ones, those consecrated, purified, and transformed in their mind. Amen. In other words, the word, come on, catch this. The word builds you up. The word gives you your inheritance. Come on, come on, come on. When it says it, the word 
gives you your rightful inheritance. Come on. Ah, listen, that to me is the, it speaks, amen, volumes. It, it, it clues us in or it gives us, it informs us as to the importance of availing ourselves to receive the word. Come on, the word of God. It, it, to me, it further uh, 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 encourages me, come on somebody, to, to, to attend church service so I can hear the word of faith. Faith does not come by what you heard. It comes by what you are hearing. Come on. Constantly. That's why we're doing a total immersion a study on the fact that we are heirs of God. It's going to revolutionize our prayers. It's going to revolutionize our expectation. It there and, and, and some total up, it's going to revolutionize our faith. Hey, amen, somebody. We are going to know who we are. We're going to know what we have. We're going to learn how to take it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel him. Hallelujah. The word of God. Come on. It does the work. Just come on, somebody. It does the work. It does the work. It'll change your mind. It'll read. That's how your mind is getting renewed. Your mind gets renewed by the word of God. And as a result of your mind being renewed, the words that come forth from your mouth are going to be words that affirm your inheritance. Come on, somebody, that you are a child of God, that you are an heir of everything now. The more you see the word, see, see, that's why I like to teach the Bible. We don't have to guess. We don't have to go by what anyone else says. Only thing we have to do is believe. We have to have faith in God as our, uh, uh, come on, and believe that what his word says is ours is in fact ours. The fact that God cannot lie. Come on, somebody. So when we find it in the Bible, we need to say, that's mine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so what the Bible is teaching us is as an heir, come on, we have complete access to our inheritance. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Book of Ephesians. Chapter one. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to start reading from verse 1. We're doing very well on time tonight. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath. Now remember, when we read hath before, we, we used another translation and we found the amplified translation. We found out that hath means the same thing as has or have. All right. Okay. So blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, is already done. Somebody say it's already done. Mm -hmm. Already did it. He's done it. According as he has, means has, uh, uh, chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5, having predestinated us into the adoption of children, by Jesus Christ to himself, 
according to the good pleasure of his will. Verse six, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. He has put favor on us. Amen. He had put favor on us. Verse seven, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Verse eight, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us, in other words, he's telling us via his word, having made known unto us, unto us the mystery of his will. Come on, somebody. His will. <laughs> when you, in the natural realm, when you have, or the or are if you are the recipient of an inheritance usually there's a will that has been pre-recorded that at the death of the testator or at the death of the one who's writing the will you in fact it can be uh, uh, uh the will is written and it tells you what's yours. Come on. So verse nine says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. So if he makes it, listen, listen, if he makes it known unto us, it therefore is no longer a mystery to us. Come on, because he's making it known. Come on. He's making it known, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a mystery to those individuals who don't study the word. It's a mystery to those, I should have started this way. It's a mystery to those who have not yet received Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. It's a mystery to those who don't study the word. It's a mystery to those who don't avail themselves to or position themselves in faith to hear the word. It, be, it remains a mystery. And that that's where Galatians says that the heir, as long as he's a child, he differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Amen. We endeavor to get you mature so you can understand, comprehend, or get receive a revelation of what's yours. Okay? Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure, uh, excuse me, according to his good pleasure. In other words, this pleased, pleases God to reveal to you and I this mystery this his, of his will. As we are in his, as we are his children, we have an, we are heirs. We have an inheritance, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. Verse 11. In whom also we have. So the title of this lesson tonight is heirs of everything now. All right. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He does what he, he's revealing it because that's what he wants to do. Amen. Now, verse 11 from the New Living Translation. I got to read that. It says, furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Bless God Almighty. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want to keep reading. That we, at verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen, what this is talking about 
is what we call saving faith. Saving faith. Listen, in other words, a person cannot hear or cannot, a person cannot be saved until after he has heard the gospel of his salvation. All right? Until then, you can't be saved. See, when a person is preaching the gospel of the kingdom, it's almost like there was a pill a long time ago. It's called a contact. And it had these tiny pills in it inside the one capsule. And they said they were, it said they were time released. Come on, time released. Okay, now listen, when the preacher is preaching, especially a word concerning salvation, what occurs is unbeknownst to the hearer, faith is being given also. Faith is being given to give the individual something to catch hold to. Come on, somebody, so he can believe. Come on. It's like there's, there's a song, I think it's by the Clark sisters. It says in that song, he threw out the lifeline. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, and so that's the lifeline. Amen. Faith, so you can receive to be saved. So now this word says, in whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with the that holy spirit of promise you wasn't sealed until you believed look at verse 14 which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory come on pentecost sunday is coming up soon I'm, i may minister on this here uh uh in, on that day. This is deep. Verse 15. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, he says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. After, after I heard that y'all had faith in the Lord, I started praying for y'all. I started interceding for y'all. That's what Paul is saying. He said, I started interceding for y'all, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory, the originator of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, said a uh, colon, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to keep reading and I'm going to come back to that verse 18. I'm going to read it from the Amphite and from the Living Bible. It, it's very important that you catch this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power? I told y'all what that was called. That's that kratos. That's that cross, that kratos. And when it says that power to usward, that's the endunomao. Come on, that's that power that in, we're endued with. Come on, somebody, that power we're endowed with. Amen. The working of his mighty power. It says, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above principality and, and, and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So now let's look back at verse uh, number 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his, the saints. The Amplified Bible reads verse 18 this way. Praise God. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. Watch this. And how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. The saints means his set apart ones. I know that there are some religions that teach that the saints are those that's in the Vatican and they got St. Christopher and St. some other people. Well, uh, well, in Christendom, us believers, 
when you get saved, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and Jesus comes to abide in your heart, amen, that, that means that we call it sanctified, or it means that you are set apart. You are therefore a saint. You don't have to receive something from the Pope and all that stuff. God calls you a saint. Amen, somebody. You are a saint. Now let's read that same verse 18, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 from the Living Bible. Let's read it. It says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can see. See, even with our natural eyes, the eyes need light to enter in for us to be able to see. Mm. Paul is preaching. He said, I pray that your hearts be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future he has called you to share. He says, I want you to realize that God has been made rich. I mean, that we have been made rich because of who we are in Christ and what Christ has given us. Amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. My God, thank you, Jesus. 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 We give God the praise. He says, I want you, your heart flooded with light. You need to see this richness, amen, this richness of this inheritance. Come on, somebody. I need you flooded. You need to receive revelation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Let's go somewhere else. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Peter once again. 1 Peter chapter 1. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, we read this earlier. We're going to read it again. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter chapter one. I'm going to start reading from verse one. The key verses is verse uh, uh, number four for us today. But uh, we, we want to read from verse one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect, we, we told you last week that that's what's, what we know as Asia Minor or Turkey. All right? Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification. I said that. Come on. Being set apart. Sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Mm. Look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our inheritance, is our, we, it belongs to us now. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance. Here we go. To an inheritance. Incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away. Reserved in heaven for you. Verse 4. I want to read it through the uh, NIV. It says, and, un in, and into an inheritance that can never perish, mm -hmm, spoil, or fade. It says this inheritance is kept. Now, perhaps this is where they miss it in the old days, where they said that everything we would receive, it's, go, it's all right, we're going to get in the sweet by and by. You know, you know, when they said this inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Mm, 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 mm. What it is saying, it is saying heaven presides over this inheritance. In, in other words, uh, when a person writes a will, uh, someone has to be the trustee. Are, are you with me? To oversee the distribution or the dispensing I feel him. The dispensing of the inheritance to make sure this one gets what he was supposed to get. This one was bequeathed the car. This one was bequeathed the house. This one's going to get the ranch. 
This one's going to get the business. This one's going to, yeah, come on, I'm, come on. Someone has to make sure mm, that, the, in, that what the individuals are supposed to receive as an inheritance, that they in fact are informed, come on somebody, about it. Because you, when they have, when they say a will, they sit down, and, and, and everybody, all the parties, Amen. Come on, that it has something to do with it. They all sit down, and their will is read to them. So what heaven does, heaven is making sure that what you're supposed to get, you get. Praise the Lord. As long as you get in this word, and understand that you are an heir. And you, and you endeavor, come on somebody, to renew your mind to what you have, who you are, what you can do, where you are, come on somebody, your relationship, come on somebody with God. Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm going to read that again from the NIV. And into an inheritance that can never perish, never perish, never perish, never perish. perish. Mm-hmm. It can never spoil. It can never fade. Mm -hmm. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, locked up. God, God, that is yours. Come on, somebody. Let's look at what it says in New Living Translation of verse 4. It says, and we have a priceless, we have, we have, we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Amen, somebody. What this Bible is teaching us tonight, what we what what did we learn from this? What's the what what can we you know summing things up from the night? Okay. Basically. Everything that God intends for us to have, we can get it now. Come on, somebody. Amen. My God supplies all you need now. Come on, somebody. You will not have a need in heaven. <laughs> he supplies it now. That's part of your inheritance. You are redeemed from destruction. When? Now. Come on, somebody. Yes, you are. You don't have to worry about anything. We can cast all our care upon him. When? Now. In heaven, we're not going to have a care. <laughs> come on. There are things. Even the, the spiritual gifts that come as a result of an individual being receiving the receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Did you know that the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues is part of your inheritance package? Come on, somebody. It's part of your inheritance. You know, part of your inheritance is power. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about there. Look, this, this, this Bible is chock full of promises from God, come on, concerning you and I as God's children, as children of God. Come on, you got to understand that everything Jesus paid for as a result of his death, burial, and resurrection is available to you and I now. I, I, I got to say it, it's available to us now. It's available to us now. What you have to do if you got to understand, the enemy constantly bur bur hits you with a barrage, hits your mind constantly to make you think, well, it's going to be, he tries to push, he tries to push God's promises for you now onto tomorrow. In other words, he tries to keep kicking the can down the road. Come on, somebody. He tries to keep kicking that can on down the road. Amen. To, 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 so, so, so now you get to the point where you don't believe for nothing until... I get to heaven. I don't know where that came from. God expects you to act like a child of God right now. Right now. If the apostles acted like, come on, they acted in power because of their faith in, we can do the same thing. Father, in Jesus' name, I praise you now. I magnify you now. I exalt you now. 
God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, open the eyes of our hearts. Open the eyes of their hearts, oh, God. Cause them to see, oh, God. Hallelujah. What you have for them. You are the God. Hallelujah. Who gives your children good things. And we re I pray for them, Father God. I pray for every viewer that they will receive from your abundant bounty, Father. I say that in Jesus' name, every need is met. Father God, help us, Father God, to be dispensers, Father God, of your grace, dispensers of your mercy, dispensers of your love, O oh God. O oh God, I pray that we will love our neighbors as ourselves. Father God, we pray. I pray that their light would shine as your children, that the world would see that Jesus is in them, Father. I pray, Father God, for those, that one that's hesitant, that they would go and receive, they would receive, receive, receive their inheritance, oh God, that they would begin to believe the word of God. I come against slothfulness, laziness, lethargy, uh, lethargy all of that, procrastination in the name of Jesus. I give you praise right now. I bless right now. I bless right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, beloved, that's all Pastor Sesam has for you right now, have for you today or tonight, excuse me. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus' name. And so remember tomorrow we will be praying via uh, Zoom teleconference at 12 noon. Praise the Lord. Thursday we pick up food. We stock our shelves. We stock our freezers. We distribute to other ministries. Uh, Sunday, we come together on Mother's Day. We got something special for the mothers. I'm understanding also that the brothers put something together for the mothers on Saturday. Well, this is how we dismiss. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength, my, my strength, excuse me, and my redeemer. And let the church say amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.